When I launched the mic, one of my biggest points of inspiration was Cabral Richards, or Cabby. Everyone knows him as Cabby. He's the host of Cabby Presents, and each week he has somebody on, and they do a one-on-one -on -one interview. He's a charismatic guy, crazy, crazy interviews, and today he joins me on episode five of The Mic. Cabby, yes. thanks for coming on The Mic. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for having me. So you uh, started as an intern on The Score. I did, yeah. Um, and then you start uh, Cabby on the Street. Yes. So how did that show come together? Uh, it was um, 2001, it's like the summer, and uh, Lisa, Lisa Bowes and Steve Coolies were doing the weekend sports show, and they wanted to make theirs a little bit different than what the other people were doing during the week. Right. And I was writing scripts, like writing highlights, like the Detroit Tigers, 4-2 over the Toronto Blue Jays, like give them yeah, the script yeah, yeah. and they would add their own flavor. But in their construction or reconstruction of their weekend show, they wanted to have like a man on the street. It's like, hey, would you be into doing this sort of man on the street segment? I was like, ah, I don't know, and and uh, meeting this guy named Brian Roy, who was my cam who ended up being my camera guy. And I was like, after a couple of weeks, I was like, all right, let me go try this this man on the street thing. And, and it was like, there was that was the only idea, like man right. on the street, and I would just go ask random people sports questions, and it was terrible at first. So I <laughs> uh, showed the boss, he's like, do another one, and I did this bit about the national anthem being played before sporting events, and if people were into that idea of it, the, continuing this tradition. And most people were like, yeah. So then at the end of the bit, I got people to start singing O Canada. Right. And I just cut them all together. And there was a uh, clip where I was singing O Canada to a baby, like this little one right here. <laughs> and, uh, and then the baby started to cry. And then my boss was like, okay, this is funny. So that was the first one that aired in uh, August of 2001. And then I just do one every week. Right. And uh, there, are, there, was, there was a stretch of time where I do like two a week, but uh, that's how it started. And and it just blew up from there kind of thing? Well, it was a slow burn. It was, it was a slow burn. burn. It yeah, was, yeah. you know, I was, I was there till like late 2002, and then I left to go to Sportsnet for a few years, working on a baseball show and a basketball show. Then I came back to the score in 05, and from 05 to 2010, that's kind of like the prime years of what people remember of the stuff that I did at the right, score. Right, right. That kind of style of walking around and doing, you know, crazy stuff and, and asking people, you know, questions are not usually um, they don't usually hear was that always the goal like when you when you entered this industry did was that the kind of thing that you wanted to do or did no, it just naturally it, grow yeah it, it wasn't sort of I didn't have the sort of premeditated plan and here I was I was just there, there was no real direction it was just whatever I would come up with and I just needed sort of this creative outlet and and it and it worked I mean a lot of the segments were really terrible Mike. Right. like there was I was asking people about stats. I was asking people like, what's a real sport? Is racing a real sport? Is figure skating a real sport? And I was asking about like Tyson fights and just all this random, whatever I could come up with right. the day before I would go shoot and I'd be out there with a clipboard and like in its early days, it was just an extension of the kind of conversations I would have with my buddies. Right. And then I would just mostly go to like college campuses because that's where people were that was like my own age. and. And I felt a little more comfortable asking like a group of like, you know, kids in a quad versus, but there were sometimes I would like be in the subway or I'd be at the, at the mall and get kicked out of the subway, get kicked out of the mall. But I just needed to just harass some people. And it was, it's hard. There's a lot of rejection, bro. Right. And, and <laughs> dealing with that, I think it's just an extension of my high school years, right? I just get rejected by girls all the time. So I, I felt comfortable getting rejected. When I had Scott MacArthur on, he told me that there is this high that comes from like coming off of a great interview. Like you walk out, like you finish your week, um, and and you have this like feeling like wow, like that was that was solid. Like have you ever had that? Yeah, yeah. When when uh, when you're really clicking with someone, uh, and you know my style is obviously a lot different. Um, it feels it feels pretty cool. Like when the athlete or the end generally when the athlete lets their guard down, they allow themselves to be a little more playful, they're engaged in the questions, yeah, that feels great. And then I actually then start to like root for that person, like, all right, you're, you're become, you become one of my guys. And then the more I get to interview that person, the, the bond just grows and I, I, can, I look forward to having a great time with that person. So yeah, there is a high sometimes when, when you, you finish with an athlete, like they're laughing. I think of this David Ortiz interview I did and I gave him like this bag of like fake Viagra 
pills. Oh They're just God. like breath mints, but they look like Viagra's. <laughs> and the la he was very generous with his laughs. So he just like, oh, like what is this? I'm like, oh, this these pills and I uh, rhyme with Niagara. <laughs> and uh, you know that that was a great. When I have moments like that, I have one one time I had Kevin Love. He was drawing like the self portrait. He goes, I did not expect. I did not think I'd be doing this today. Like, have you ever had crazy moments? Like moments that like camera turned on, it happened, and in that moment you were like, I can't believe that kind of happened, and it just blew you away? Yeah, the one that comes to mind is, I was at, I mentioned Mike Tyson earlier, I was at Mike Tyson's house and he put, uh, I got him to put Vaseline on my face. <laughs> and, uh, cause I wanted to kind of feel what it was like to be a boxer. And in the moment I'm like, wow, Mike Tyson, who I revere, cause I'm of a certain age. Right. I'm like this guy, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm in his home, in his backyard by the pool, and he's like taking these healthy scoops of, Vaseline that we just bought from like a Ralph's around the corner or down the street from his place. And he's applying, and he's like putting some behind my ears. Like that was, that was pretty cool. Flying in Kobe's helicopter was pretty legit. <laughs> the first time drinking out of the Stanley Cup and I have never earned the privilege right. of even touching the Stanley Cup because I didn't put in the work like these guys have done their entire lives. But the first time drinking from the Stanley Cup was like, that was amazing. I ate cereal out of the Stanley Cup. Like those, those moments are pretty special for me because I was just, I'm just a guy from here. I'm just a guy from Toronto. I was born at Mount Sinai Hospital, which is just down the street. Like, you know, when I was in high school, I just wanted to be like Will Smith and Denzel and like entertain people. But I found a lane uh, that works for me and I've been able to have great moments with super successful and famous people. Like I told you before, uh, we, I kind of like to do something fun. Let's uh, do it. So I'm into it. I'm into I it. I have your face on a stick and okay. somebody else that we both know. On okay. Stick, so okay. We'll do that and, and yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah. Should, should I wait here? No. Yeah, sure. Oh, come oh, yeah. I'll grab it. I'll okay. grab it. I'll, I'll grab it. So I'm me. Yeah. I'm you, me. You're also Dave. So this is. That's Dave Lannis. Dave Lannis. Yeah. Who I, who I used to work with for many years at the score. And El Presidente at College of Sports Media. Okay. Sure. Sure. So, yeah. I'll give you both of them. Okay. I have, we're, we're playing who is, who has, and who would. Who is, so it's questions. who has, and who would. Right, so it's okay. just questions like based off Some scenario? That. Yeah. Okay. Who has a better golf game? Oh, Dave Lannis for sure. <laughs> I, I'm sure he's probably like a single digit handicap. Um, I've never seen it, but I'm confident that he's a single digit handicap. Who is better looking? Oh, that's, that's not even a question. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, because of this job, you know, I, I've become a lot sexier because <laughs> I'm standing next to some very handsome men in sports. So just by default. And also, I can grow my hair out. Like, <laughs> this, this is a generous hairline for Dave Lannis. I haven't seen him in a few years, but I'm sure he's got that horseshoe at this point. So <laughs> I'm taking myself absolutely 1,000%. You know, you, he was a reporter and, and you do what you do. Yep. Who is more likely to completely mess up on him. Just, oh, just more forget likely a question to, yeah. or something just goes uh, south. I would say I'm more likely to mess up on air. I didn't, I don't do as many live hits. And I think Lannis, when he was a reporter, he did some tapes, but he did some live stuff from the, the Sky Dome or whatnot. I still call it the Sky Dome. Uh, but since I don't do that many live hits, I would say I have a better chance of messing up just because uh, I'm a knucklehead. And Dave was a professional. <laughs> now this is what I'm gonna get. I'm, he's gonna be mad at me for this one. But who has a better haircut? Who has a better haircut? Uh, there's. You know what? If Dave Lannis got Gritty's haircut, the new <laughs> Philadelphia Flyers mascot, then he would have a better haircut. But obviously, I'm choosing myself in this one because I'm self-absorbed and I got a nice fade. The fade needs to be actually lined up. It needs to be a little bit fresher. But it's gotta be touched up. It does need to be touched up, but I'm definitely going with myself on this one. Funny you mentioned gritty, because my last one has to do with gritty. Okay. Who it, who would be? Who would be? A better gritty. Who could you which one of you you put in that suit oh, and you're the better right. gritty? Who could be a better gritty? And I think because Dave Lannis gives less bleeps than I do, I'm gonna go with Lannis. Listen, he's a little bit older than I am, but it doesn't mean he can't move. It doesn't mean he can't have a good time. And obviously, if there uh, are some adult beverages uh, that rhyme with uh, tequila, then, uh, <laughs> then I'm gonna go with Landis as the better as the better mascot. So, you, like at school, we do the CSM ball, which is a touch football thing. You should see this guy referee. I mean, personality <laughs> comes out. Really? He's got the socks. 
He's got the socks right here and he throws them. I mean, I've never actually seen a you sock You guys have a touch out. football league? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. It's not, it has no relation to the school. He makes that very clear, but it is and the he's CSM the ref? Bowl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So are there, wait, the CSM Bowl, so is there only like one game, two teams? It's, or is there like a... There's, so there's four classes, like two first years, two second years, and it's three weeks of regular season and then the playoffs. How many games a week? One, one game a week? One game a week, every Thursday. So we got CSM Bowl finale tonight, championship game. Wait a second. You played oh, yeah. three regular season games? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, so, and it's serious. Like, so they're, like every team could be one and two. Yeah, it's possible. Like this year we had two teams two and one, one team oh and three, and... Uh, no, uh, three teams are two and one. Three one teams are two. Okay, wait, okay. One team is zero three. That one team just got beat up by everybody. Yeah. CSM Bolt ends tonight, but he will be out there with the socks. I mean, if you want to come, you can see him. Just chuck him. I would love to see like a, a tight ninety-second highlight pack. <laughs> oh. And then like Dave starts the highlight pack because he's like, all right, these are the rules, blah blah blah, and then just highlight some music. I want to, Mike. I want to see highlights of the game. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, we will. I want to see the next generation of athletes coming into sports <laughs> media so I just know who I need to watch and who I need to pay attention to. Gabby. This is awesome, man. Thanks, Thanks so much for, for having Thanks me. Thanks for doing it. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate that. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks for watching another episode of The Mic. Make sure to like and subscribe below because we'll be bringing you a new episode every Friday.